Hello, this is Brother Cromar from the Maths Department at BYU-Idaho, and these videos are covering Lesson 9, which is dealing for inference for one mean, sigma known, or primarily dealing with hypothesis testing. And so here's the outline for the videos. First, we'll talk about or distinguish the difference between the null and alternative hypothesis. Then we'll talk about the difference between a type 1 and a type 2 error. And then finally, we'll, we'll end it probably in part two of these videos dealing with how to for hypothesis tests, testing one mean where, where sigma or a population standard deviation is known. So first of all, the difference between a null and alternative hypothesis. A null hypothesis is designated or symbolized as H naught. And so with null hypothesis, we assume it to be true unless there's enough evidence. It's the status quo. When we're comparing, say, two different means, which we'll cover later in the course, it's when we have no difference. And then it's equal to the norm of the status quo. The alternative hypothesis, symbolized by HA, is another hypothesis to propose that the null hypothesis should be rejected. Now, basic examples of the null alternative hypothesis say the status quo back in the day was that the world was flat. Okay? And so that would be the null hypothesis. The alternative would be that it's not flat. And so there are people like Copernicus who found some evidence that showed that the world was not flat, that it was, it was at least it was not, it was not flat, and discovered later it's round. Okay? So that would be an example, a basic example of the null and alternative hypotheses. So then the next thing is, what are the different types of hypothesis tests? Well, first of all, there is the null hypothesis is that we would designate this as H naught where mu is equal to a given value, or some value. It could be 15, it could be, say, the null hypothesis of men's height is 69 and a half inches. That would be an example of the null hypothesis. Um, the alternative, there's three different options for the alternative hypothesis. It could be that it's not equal to, so we want to say that, that we want to disprove that, say, the mean, the, men, the mean of men's heights are 69 and a half inches. So we just want to say it's not equal to, or perhaps we think that it's the, the, the mean of men's heights have decreased, so it could be al the alternative looking like mu is less than a given value, or the alternative hypothesis could be that the mean is greater than a given value. Okay, so there's three different alternative hypotheses that you could see. This is, represents a two-sided test or a two-tailed test if we're looking to see if there's just a difference compared to the null hypothesis. And then this here represents a one-sided test on the left side, and this here represents a one-sided test on the right side. We use mu for means and p for proportions. There are two types of parameters that we'll cover a lot throughout this course. Mu we'll talk about with unit two, and p we'll talk about with unit three. Okay? So now here's, here's an example. According to giving and volunteering in the U.S., in, in the U.S. 2001 edition, the mean charitable contribution per household in the U.S. in 2000 was $1,623. The researcher claimed that the level of giving is different since then. So the null, the null hypothesis, is that the mean is equal to $1,623. That's the status quo. But the researcher claims that the, that the level of giving is different. So now the alternative hypothesis is that the mean is not equal to $1,623. Second example, according to the Federal Housing Finance Board, the mean price of a single-family home in 2005 was $299,800. The real estate broker believes that because of the recent credit crunch, the mean price has decreased since then. So the null in this case, the status quo back in 2005, was that the mean was equal to $299,800. Now the alternative hypothesis is that the researcher claims that the mean price has decreased since then. So how we write that, how we write the alternative is that HA HA is that the mean, or the mean, the population mean, is less than $299,800. Uh, by the way, every time we refer to the null hypothesis, we always refer to it in parameters. And so we don't say X bar, we say mu when we're dealing with, when we're dealing with uh, the null and alternative hypothesis. We deal with the parameters, the population parameters. Okay. So now, what, what I'd like for you to do is uh, stop the recording or stop the video and go through these examples to determine the correct null and alternative hypotheses. Okay, so the null hypothesis for this is that the mean, the population mean, is equal to four, four, $49.91. The alternative, since the researchers think it's different, is that the mean, the population mean, is not equal to $49.91. Now, in the second example, the mean, 
is we're looking to see the average ACT math score is 21 for students taking the exam. The teacher believes that because of the greater emphasis in math, the test scores have increased over the last several years. So then all the status quo is the mean is equal to 21. And the alternative is that the mean is greater than 21 because research completes and it's increased. Okay? So now what I'd like to do is talk about the difference between a type 1 and a type 2 error. So there's, there's two types of errors when we deal with hypothesis testing. There's something called a type 1 error, where we reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is true. Okay? The second type of error is that where when we gather data and we don't reject the null hypothesis when in fact the alternative is true. Okay? So there's two types of errors. We can, and we and every test that we do with hypothesis testing statistics, there are two types of errors that we'll have to deal with. And notice here, we never accept the null hypothesis. We either reject it or not reject the null hypothesis. Now, another thing, definition, the probability of type 1 error is equal to alpha. That's another Greek letter that you'll have to know. Alpha is equal to the probability of type 1 error, but it's also equal to what's called the level of significance. Okay? And the probability of a type 2 error is equal to beta. So basically what you have to understand the relationship between these two is that when one probability goes up, the other goes down. Okay? And you as a researcher has to decide which one has greater consequences. Now here's an example. Uh, dealing with, uh, with an, uh, the, the American justice system. There's two possible errors that a jury can commit. Either they find the defendant guilty when in fact they're innocent, that's a type 1 error, or they find the defendant not guilty when in fact that in reality the person is guilty. So, um, so, which, so the question you should ask yourself is which one are you more willing to live with, or which one is more severe? Which one would be more severe, a type 1 or a type 2 error? So may argue with the American justice system that uh, we would we would want to lower um, we want to lower the type two error because it's innocent and too proven guilty. So we'd want to lower a type two error. We'd rather find a defendant not guilty when in fact they're guilty versus uh, finding the defendant guilty when in fact they're innocent. We'd rather prefer that, but it may depend on the. Another, uh, it could be the severity of the crime as well. So it depends. There's, there's no one right answer about this. But in, in the end, there's two different types of errors. And you have to decide which one is more severe. Another example might be, this is more of a fun one. Say, for instance, you are a student that really wants to enforce the honor code here at the dressing room Center of BYU-Idaho. And you can commit. So when you approach somebody, there's actually two possible errors that you can commit. You can either... Um, conclude that the person is wearing flip-flops when in fact they're not, or you can conclude a person walking by you is not wearing flip-flops when in fact they actually are. So in this case, which one are you more willing to live with? Okay, or which one, which, or you could also ask which one has more serious consequences. Now this next one here, um, with this next one here, what we can do is, is that we can, we can uh, look at determining a drug has major side effects. We can conclude that a drug has side effects when, in fact, it really doesn't have any side effects. Or we can say that there is no side effects when there actually is side effects. Now, in this case, which one would be more severe, a type 1 or a type 2 error? Well, in this case, it would be that a type 2 error would be more severe. Okay? So determining that there's no side effects when there, when there are side effects, especially if severe, is, is huge. Okay? Now the last slide I want to show you here, I want you to go through the, this first example. According to Giving and Volunteer in the U.S. 2001 edition, the mean charitable contribution per household in the U.S. in 2016-23, researcher claims that the level of giving is different since then. Suppose that the sample data indicate that the null hypothesis should not be rejected. Also suppose, in fact, that the alternative was correct. What type of error did we commit? Well, in the data, they didn't reject them, but based off, off the results, they found that they should not reject it when, in fact, the alternative was correct. So in this case, they committed a type 2 error. They didn't reject the null when, in fact, the alternative was true. And then the last example, what I want you to do is stop the video, and we'll go through and determine whether or not it's a type 1 or a type 2 error is committed. Okay, now in this example, suppose that the sample data had the sample mean lower than the null, and the data indicated that null hypothesis should be rejected. However, in reality, the mean price is still 299000 In this case, a type 1 error was committed because, the null, because we rejected the null when, in fact, the null was true. So I'll stop the video, and we'll continue with hypothesis testing in, in uh, part 2.